students in plant science at Cal Poly Pomona. He's an admirer of the outdoors, science, as well as the theater and the arts. The subject of his speech is also based on the scope of his thesis. The title of his speech is Asian Citrus Phyllis, the citrus industry's worst <coughs> nightmare. Please help me welcome Franz Fernandez to the lecture. Right. Fellow Toastmasters, most honored guests. How many of you have grown citrus or are growing citrus right now? How many of you are familiar with the Asian citrus psyllid? <laughs> so this little insect, which is the size of a ballpoint pen, nearly destroyed Florida's citrus industry. Wow. For this talk, I'd like to discuss about the backgrounds, the objectives of my research, which, as Roy mentioned, is the uh, scope of my thesis, the methods I use, and some future studies. So just a little bit of background. The Asian citrus psyllid, Diaphorina citra, Kuwayama, Hemeptera psyllidae, uh -huh. oh, enough of all that jargon. <laughs> it was originally found in Taiwan in uh, 1907. And yeah, at, at, the, at the time it wasn't known exactly what effects it had. The whole idea of molecular biological screening was unknown. It was then later found over, over the next few decades in South America, in the 90s. It was found in countries like Mexico, Costa Rica, sorry, Puerto Rico, Cuba. It was found here in the United States in Florida in 1998. So these are two different forms of the psyllid. The one that we're most concerned about is on the left. That's the Asian form, Diaphorina citra. The right form is Triosa eritrea. That's the African form of the psyllid. So fortunately, these psyllids the psyllids themselves, they're harmless, but they carry a bacterium, which is inherited by infected uh, citrus, called Candidatus liberibacter. Now this bacterium, when it's ingested by the psyllid, and then the psyllid applies to these citrus trees as it feeds on the foliage, it transmits that bacterium into the phloem of the citrus, causing citrus greening disease, or Wolong B, uh, which is the uh, uh, yellowing, stands for the yellowing, yellowing disease of Southeast Asia. Another thing to mention, another thing that this is very critical about this disease is that once it's infected, it takes many years, five to seven years, for the tree to die. It's very difficult to determine the symptoms. The symptoms are often confused for micronutrient deficiencies for farmers. So really the best way, if you're a citrus grower, is to test it. You can test these parts, you can test it for Candidatus, Candidatus libriobacter using PCR. Oh, and also, in addition, you can also, t if you have any concerns for micronutrient deficiencies, you can have it in the lab and they'll test it for 
your basic routine general minerals. So again, I just wanted to share the characteristics of this particular psyllid. As you can see, it has this very, doesn't show the skin, but it's a 45 degree angle. It's, it is one of the few known insects that feeds where its rear is kind of raised in the air. <laughs> Again, this stuff exhibiting the, the leaves. Typically, it looks, it looks very similar to uh, micronutrient deficiency, like iron, iron, calcium. But again, really the best way to determine is through PCR, polymerase chain uh, reaction. And again, the fruit, the fruit has a very sour taste. It's not very well developed. It looks very greeny, hence the name citrus greeny. So some of the traps that have been used in the past, especially for ACP, and a lot of the pests are through lights, through chemicals. The only problem is that biologically, these, these insects inherit defense mechanisms over the years. So chemicals, you really have to through, go through a use of what we call an agricultural cultural method, integrative pest management. So now the, this idea of the use of acoustics. I mean, acoustics has been used early on since in the 20th century. However, many of these traps have been considered too costly to use in the field. So for the scope of my research, <laughs> excuse me, I wanted to find a trap that was cost effective, that was portable, that can be used for the layman in whatever citrus orchard you are, or even in your backyard. I wanted to determine at what intensity and the rest interval would be the most effective to capture these cells. And just see if this can be a new novel way of capturing ACP. So, so starting on the top left, I used the uh, yellow citrus panel. These are the, st these are the same sticky panels that are used by the CDSA and the USDA. On, on the bottom is the trap, very much similar to what I have, my prototype. It is a <laughs> Raspberry Pi microcontroller, my Raspberry Pi microcontroller, battery pack, and MP3. I will pass it along. So the Raspberry Pi, as I mentioned, very common motherboard, very easy to use for, to, to do a wide variety of of programming assignments. This particular trap was actually programmed using Python. Now to use the call, uh, Marion, if you could just please press the button on the, on the back of the uh, MP3 speaker. That would be a thing I know with. <laughs> <laughs> mating call. A mating call uh, what was reported to be either a male or female ACP. So, reported to be a male or female ACP. And this no, call it, it, it. was captured by a postdoc from, from the USDA. Wow. So that trap that you're hearing has been programmed to go on a cycle for wow. every five seconds to capture any suspecting ACP. Now, how do we get that call, you may ask? Well, there is this instrument that, that we use for a lot of, uh, for many entomologists. It's the PDV, super sensitive, and I actually had the privilege to use it when I went to the USDA office just in Fresno. But now I want to discuss about coming back home. Now, these are two locations, for any of you who are familiar with Cal Poly Pomona, there were two locations I was looking at. This is the manor house. This is where the president lives. So she has a citrus orchard, and I was busy doing traps there. <laughs> and then for any of you who are familiar with Agriscape, so we have a wonderful farm store. So I, I also looked at some of the citrus orchards that we have out there, too. So now... The results, again, they're ongoing. 
so I, there's not so much I can say. But I would like to do for future is to explore different frequencies. Now, that particular call you're hearing is at varying levels of between 1.8 to 2.2 kilohertz. So I think what would be great is if we can dissect down, if we can dissect down different frequencies and see at which intensity would be more effective for these controls. And also, pheromone use. With ACP, there's two different routes, two different factors you need to take into account is through, through chemical and through an auditory vi vibrational mechanism. So in a sense, the male ACP will give out a call. Assuming a female ACP wants to be receptive, she will give a reply and they will go back and forth. Think of it as a, a tennis match, if you will. So they go back and forth, back and forth, until the male ACP locates the female ACP, and then mating. So these are just some great websites. The Citrus Research Board has been he heavily involved with my research and it has a ton of information about ACP surveying and any more further updates uh, that have been done with the uh, USDA and the CFA. And another good website is the UCIPM. This talks more about the pests itself, especially pests here in California. There's tons, even just, just in citrus alone, such as citrus canker and the yellow brown moth. Thank you, Mahan and Tim, for sponsoring.